get ready for a mind-blowing discovery. It turns out brains aren't all about size. Einstein's brain was actually smaller than average at around 2.6 pounds, but he's still widely considered one of the smartest people ever. Now, imagine having the largest recorded brain weighing a whopping 6.28 pounds. You'd think that would guarantee genius, right? Well, not quite that person struggled with delayed development. The human brain is full of mysteries, and researchers are on a mission to uncover its limits. Join us as we explore what happens when eight scientists and one adventurous cook ventured into Antarctica's harsh isolation and freezing temperatures. Their incredible experience holds some surprising insights about the impact on our brains and bodies. Imagine being one of nine adventurous explorers who spent a staggering 14 months in Antarctica at the Numir Heathere Research Station. No personal space, no contact with the outside world, and a monotonous environment that's eerily similar to what astronauts might face on long space missions. Physiologist Alexander Stahn from Berlin's Charity University de Medicine shares his first-hand experience. The thrill of seeing Antarctica's breathtaking white landscape fades quickly as it becomes a never-ending repeat. But don't let the scenery fool you all. This unique study offers groundbreaking insights into how our bodies and brains adapt to extreme isolation. Let's dive in and discover what they found. What happens to our incredible human brains when we're stuck in isolation for months on end? To find out, our team of scientists joined forces with Professor Dr. Simon Kuhn from the Max Planck Institute for Human Development to investigate the effects of an Antarctic adventure on our brain structure and function. Specifically targeting the hippocampus, that amazing memory and navigation powerhouse. You might recall a similar study where rats learned way faster when they had buddies or a cool environment compared to being solo in a plane cage. But here's the million dollar question does this rule apply to humans too? Now let's dive into how these brave scientists conducted their icy experiment. For months, they faced the harsh polar winter, enduring freezing temperatures of minus 50 degrees Celsius. That's a chilly minus 50, 8 Fahrenheit. No evacuation or fresh supplies were possible during this time, making them completely cut off from the rest of the world. But before and after their solo adventure, our scientists took part in some cool computer tests to assess their mental toughness focus, memory, fast thinking, and spatial smarts were all put to the test. They also gave blood samples to check on a vital brain protein called BDNF. It's like rocket fuel for your neurons. To see if their brains had changed shape during this extreme challenge, they used fancy MRI machines to scan eight of the participants' brains, zooming in on the hippocampus, our trusty memory and navigation buddy. But here's where it gets really interesting. The researchers found that the harsh polar environment took a toll on one part of the hippocampus called the dentate gyrus. Its volume shrank by an average of 7.2% compared to a control group who stayed cozy at home. This reduction in brain size wasn't just a random result. It was linked to how well our scientists performed in specific cognitive tests. They struggled with spatial thinking and focusing on what really mattered, ignoring distractions. Typically, repeated testing should make you better at something, but not this time. The polar winter had a lasting impact on these critical mental skills. Now let's talk about the brain's response to these extreme conditions. Normally when you practice or learn something new, your performance gets better each time, but not for our polar explorers. They just didn't see that typical improvement, and there's a reason for it their levels of BDNF. A key protein for brain health took a hit. The hippocampus, which we already know got smaller, is super sensitive to stress and isolation, like what the scientists faced at the station. On the flip side, it also loves variety and social interactions. So there's hope. Scientists think that with some fresh stimulation, maybe from exploring new places or meeting new people, this change could be reversible. But here's where things get interesting or concerning. Although researchers are hopeful about reversing that change, so far they haven't seen any signs of recovery in the explorer's BDNF levels, even after returning home from Antarctica and having some time to unwind. Their BDNF levels remained low for a while longer, not bouncing back to normal. On a more positive note, our brains are incredibly resilient dar. They can adapt by finding new ways to work when certain areas or cells aren't functioning properly, which is a pretty cool survival mechanism. To learn more about how this works, let's look at some amazing research from Caltech. 
where scientists studied six young adults who had undergone brain surgery as kids to control severe epilepsy and ended up having half of their brains removed. Now we're diving into some seriously cool science. Six young adults who had half of their brains removed as kids still showed pretty normal brain activity thanks to their brains, incredible ability to adapt and compensate for the loss. Although this study involved a small number of participants, it's a really interesting finding that gives us hints about how our brains can adjust when things get tough. And here's where it gets even more fascinating. Research in animals has shown similar results, suggesting that extreme environments might actually harm our brains. So what's next? The scientists at Caltech want to find out if exercise could help shield our brains from these negative effects. But this also raises bigger questions. How do we cope when we're faced with extreme conditions on the physical and mental levels? What adaptations can our bodies and minds go through in response to challenges like those found in Antarctica? Let's check out what happened with a team of adventurers from Kazakhstan who took on an Antarctic challenge. They spent just 11 days in some of the planet's most extreme conditions. During this time, they underwent regular physical tests every three days, which gave scientists a glimpse into how their bodies and minds adapted to the harsh environment. Interestingly enough, on day one, these polar explorers were super pumped and full of excitement. It was their first time in Antarctica, after all. But as the days went by, things took an expected turn, the stunning landscape started to feel repetitive, and the daily routine became a bit too monotonous. Their interest levels began to dip as they settled into the extreme conditions. So here's what happened next. The initial buzz and tension actually helped these explorers get moving and kickstart their body's adaptation to Antarctica's extreme conditions. As they pushed through the first three days, something remarkable occurred on day four. Their cardiovascular systems totally adjusted to the cold, resulting in a noticeable spike in blood pressure. But what was even more fascinating is that from this point onwards, things started winding down. Their heart rates plummeted and remained stable for the rest of the trip, with their breathing rate gradually slowing down too. And get this, their emotional state, which had dipped due to the monotonous routine, began to bounce back and actually reached almost the same level as that first day's excitement by the end of the expedition. Now let's dive into what happened from day five onwards. It was basically a never-ending cycle of dealing with freezing temperatures, relentless winds, and physically exhausting activities for up to 10 hours every single day. To top it all off, they were surviving on just two meals per day. You'd think their bodies would be in constant shock, but surprisingly, they managed to stabilize after that initial adjustment period. The real challenge, though, was building a cohesive team. People who were complete strangers had to suddenly become tight-knit unit, and let me tell you, it wasn't easy. It took the entire expedition for them to start feeling even remotely comfortable around each other, only when they finally reached the South Pole on the last day. If their mission had gone on any longer, things could have taken a turn for the worst awe. Their mental state was hanging by a thread. You want to know how cold and loneliness can affect our minds? Well, let's look at some pretty cool science experiments with rodents. They're like our tiny furry stand-ins for humans. When these little guys were stuck in freezing temperatures, researchers found that they turned into total grumps. They got aggressive. But here's the thing, it wasn't just the cold making them cranky. It was also the isolation and constant fear that came with being alone for two whole weeks. This stress response triggered a weird brain chemical called tachycanine peptides to build up in their brains, messing up how they reacted to threats. But when scientists blocked these peptides, poof, no negative effects from loneliness. It's like magic. So what can we take away from these tiny test subjects and their chilly adventures? Well, it turns out that the cool research on rodents could actually help us tackle some serious human mental health challenges, and that's pretty awesome. But let's switch gears for a hot second sellers, pun intended, because our bodies are superheroes when it comes to fighting off cold temperatures. When things get frosty and your body temp dips between 90, 5 and 80, 9.6 Fahrenheit, here's what happens first. Your blood vessels go into defense mode, narrowing down the flow of warm blood to your extremities so they can conserve heat for the heart and brain. It's like a built-in heating system. Next up, your hairs stand on end, giving you that wild, fuzzy look. Imagine if humans could grow fur in response to cold. 
Finally, when all else fails, shivering kicks in, it's your body's crazy attempt to generate heat by making your muscles contract uncontrollably. That's one fierce way to stay warm. Okay, let's dive into what happens when shivering finally stops, and trust me, this is a game changer your body's ability to warm up just skyrocketed five times its original level. That's because all that pent up blood from narrowed vessels suddenly rushes down to your extremities, and it's like getting a major warm hug from within. But if things get even colder, we're talking between 80, 6.9 and 80, 5.1 Fahrenheit, things take a serious turn for the worse your body starts shutting down, you enter a coma, and eventually, without oxygen, brain death occurs. Now, here's the wild part, because hypothermia progresses so slowly in extreme conditions, if rescued just in time, doctors can actually bring people back from what seemed like certain doom. It's like a real-life sci-fi plot twist. So, we want to know, how would you cope with your brain and body under extreme conditions? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. We love seeing your support shine through. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to our channel, Fresh Edutainment.